Hey savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here and today we'll be checking out the electrician's meter of choice, the Fluke 117 multimeter. And I'm going to be opening this up for the first time today, so let's get straight into it. And it comes pretty sealed with this plastic. It's not too bad, it's not one of those where it completely seals you in and you have to get something sharp to get in. We have this little pamphlet and then we actually have the meter itself which has a little tab. We'll get that right out. And here's the meter itself. It looks wonderful and can simply be moved around. Their knobs are quality. They got these little nubs on the side. That way you can easily move this around with one finger if necessary. And it's quite lovely. As we can see, we're going through different modes here. We have the manual supplement, which tells us some issues that have been found here with the Fluke 117. But besides that, we have our manual here for the 114, 115, and 117, all part of the 1110 series multimeter. So what's great about this guy is that it, it can actually tell you if there's a voltage around with their volt alert down here, this setting, even if you're not using the leads. We'll take a look at that in a bit, but let's get out the leads themselves and check those out. Plastic leads, as you would expect, and let's see, we could probably take the tips off here. You sure can, so you can get a bigger lead and get into those hard to reach places. And of course, these plastic leads help too when you don't necessarily need to measure into things that are so far away and you don't want to short the leads together. They're fine. In the past, using these leads, what I've come to notice is that they're a cheaper set of leads and over time, they will give up on you. And that's usually to do with the ends of them. Somewhere in here, if you get enough of this rotation, what will happen is eventually they'll give up. Or on the opposite side, if we check that out, same kind of deal. They'll start wearing right at the edge here and eventually they will give out and you will have little frays coming out. So anyways, we can grab these. We'll put them on so we can start using the fluke right away. And for voltage, I'll go and put the lead in on the side. And then of course, we'll use black for common and we'll put it in the other sides. Just make sure you press them in quite well or else they're not all the way in. As you can see here, it fits the hand really well. They've grooved it in on the sides, which is great. And these little nubs, like I said before, help you switch over real easily. You can of course use the knob itself on top. And then if we go to the back, what's also nice is this thing can stand. You can stand it up, no problem. Let's get it on frame here. And I like to put those aside, of course, whenever I am standing it that way, it's not wearing on the bottom here for these leads. Continuing on, let's talk about modes. So there are quite a few modes here. We have a low impedance mode, as well as measuring AC voltage, DC voltage. And then also what's really nice about this, that didn't used to be a option on these 117s is measuring in millivolts and that's for DC or AC. We have measuring resistance. So currently we have an open load, which means we have a completely open circuit. Going down, we have testing continuity. This is one of my favorites. Let's hear that beep. If we touch these together, sure enough, zero ohms and it's a complete short. You of course test that out by just putting the leads together and that creates a short as far as the meter can tell. I'll put the I'm gonna put the clips back on real quick so I don't lose them. That's probably the first thing that's gonna happen to me. Anyways, continuing on, we'll talk about measuring for capacitance. If we go down, here is where you can get a capacitor and measure the capacitance or the forward bias of a diode. Continuing on, we can measure frequency here. And that again is for analog current. And finally, direct current can be measured now, one of the things that distinguishes here, the 117 from the 115 is the volt alert. So we should be able to pick up on a voltage here. Let's see if I go to one of my lights here, whether it picks up on it. Sure enough, it does. As I'm getting close here, it can pick up on a voltage. All you have to do is bring this side, which is the top side of the multimeter to whatever voltage that you have by. So for example, here's a cable. Look at that, it's volt alert. It's telling you that there's some voltage present. So it makes it really easy to check a cabinet, let's say, and make sure that power is down so you don't get inside of a live cabinet. 
if you do that type of work. Now this is a electrician's multimeter as it is advertised right here. It says it everywhere you see one of these, you see, you'll see that it's of Fluke's high standard in accuracy, which you'll know you're getting when you buy a Fluke meter. These are more expensive than most multimeters. And there's a reason for that. They're built tough. What you could throw this guy around quite a bit without actually damaging it at all. As you hold it, you see it's a very solid build. Of course, there are more functions of, such as getting minimax, changing the lighting up a little bit. If you want, you can see down at the bottom, if you want voltage readings, resistance, checking the C continuity, or checking that capacitance, you can with this side. If you want to do anything with current, you have to move your lead over to the A side for amperage. It's a 10 amp fused circuit. So if you blow the 10 amp fuse for some reason, which wouldn't be a good thing, you would have to take this apart. There's a fuse right inside that you can switch out if you have to, but hopefully you don't do that and you don't have to mess with that at all. An absolutely spectacular meter for electricians and hobbyists too. I wouldn't necessarily suggest it to hobbyists. You could probably get away with one that's way cheaper than this one and still have most of these functions, if not all of them. You might lose a little accuracy, but that's not a big deal necessarily. It's quite a wonderfully designed thing. What we'll do next is let's check the size here. Sometimes that can be a deciding factor for people on whether or not they want to actually buy something like this. Let's check out exactly how big you can expect this to be. So if you're looking at the top here, we're looking at around 84 millimeters. And if we switch up here in inches, let's just do fractional. It's about three inches and five sixteenths. And then if we look the other way, maybe I can get this big enough here. Otherwise I'll probably have to get a tape. Well, we're looking at right around six inches and nine sixty fourths. Or if we do it in millimeters, it's 156 millimeters tall. And then the depth, of course, let's just check that out while we have the chance, is around 41 millimeters, or if we look at inches, one inch and five eighths. Well, now that you know what this all comes with and that it's a wonderful product, at least for electricians and advanced electronics enthusiasts, let me know if you plan on picking one up in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this unboxing and quick review of a Fluke 117 multimeter with the integrated voltage detection. I'm excited to start using this one. I use flukes on the job quite often and have grown accustomed to how rugged and accurate they are. Two of the best selling points here for these flukes. And with that volt alert, it really just makes things a little easier without using the leads, being able to detect voltage. And after looking at those measurements for width and length, as well as thickness, this comes in a fairly small form factor for what it is. Well, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please make sure to post them in the comment section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.